Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to AJ 101 Criminal Law Online. My name is Tony Farrar, and I am your instructor for this semester. Today's lecture is going to be the syllabus review, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. We have a lot of content that we need to cover. So, again, the course uh, AJ 101, the section number 3651, the course name is Criminal Law. This is the fall 2021 semester, and we are online. Under instructor contact information, here is my information. I am located on the Menifee campus. Here's the address. This is my desk phone. Um, I've also put in here my email, my Twitter information, and then two websites. The first is a link to the Criminal Justice Club Facebook page. So if you have an interest in uh, joining that club and basically hanging out with those that have law enforcement in their minds as uh, their career path. Uh, feel free to uh, take a look at what they're doing. And then also I have another link to the career education website, which is a really good website to help you basically look and see if you're ready for an online class and also show you different pathways on how to reach your career goal. So it's a really cool website and I would recommend that you take a look at it. Next, I have my office hours. So again, I am located on the Menifee campus. My office is in the 3000 building. The number is 3003. I have on-campus office hours, as you can see from 1020 in the morning until 1120. And then again, from one to 230 on both Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now for an online class, I have office hours weekly on Wednesday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m. And you can access those office hours through my online virtual meeting room, if you will. And later on in this lecture, I will show you how to do so. I'm also available at any other time by appointment. Email is going to be the best way to contact me. If you do email me, please do, do me a favor and place this header in the subject line. So it would be an example I have for you would be Farrar, which is my last name, AJ101-3651, that's the section number, and then the class. And the reason for this is because of the fact I teach several classes. This really is the best way to make sure that I know who you are and exactly what class you are in. And that will really help me get the information back to you as quickly as possible. Please note that all emails should come from your MSJC email account. Do not use your private email unless it's an emergency or something's wrong with the uh, college email, etc. Um, if you are requested to submit any type of written assignment in Canvas, which you're going to be this semester, please submit it in Microsoft Word or a PDF doc, okay? If you upload or send a document in another word processor format like WordPerfect, um, or if you upload it through something like a third party like Google Docs, there's, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to open it. And if I can't open it, I can't read it. And if I can't read it, I can't grade it. So please, that's really an important thing to uh, remember. Um, so again, whatever you need to upload, upload directly into the assignment. Don't send it through Google Docs to where I can't access it. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, kind of moving down the page now, please note that this syllabus is what I call a living document and therefore subject to change during the semester. If I do make a change, I typically don't, but if I do, students will be made aware of any changes uh, when they occur in the form of an email or an announcement through Canvas. So another thing to please remember to do would be to set up whatever electronic device you're using, your phone, your computer, your iPad, etc. Make sure that it's set up to be able to receive email or text message um, announcements uh, through Canvas so you're aware of any of those changes. Um, also, uh, note that all assignments and due dates are in the syllabus. Therefore, it is your responsibility to read and follow them. 
it's not my responsibility to continually remind you of tests, quizzes, or any other assignments that's contained within the syllabus. Now, with that being said, I'm going to remind you. Okay, I send out reminders, a couple reminders on assignments weekly, but at the end of the day, it is your responsibility. So please uh, make sure that you do that. So what is this class exactly? Well, this course covers a lot of different aspects. Uh, the historical development of criminal law, the, the philosophy of law and constitutional provisions, different definitions, uh, classifications of crimes, defenses, excuses, justifications, etc., and the application to the system of administration of justice. So not only are you going to learn some of the different terms, etc., but we hope that you're going to be able to apply them. We're going to do some legal research. We're going to take a look at some case laws, uh, some different methodologies as it relates to criminal law, and also different concepts of laws as a social force, meaning how do they impact me, not only as a citizen, but perhaps as a law enforcement officer. So we're going to look at both sides of that. Next, we have uh, the program learning outcomes, and I'm not going to go through each one of these individually. You can take a look at those um, at your leisure. Next, we have the course learning outcomes. And then finally, we have the learning objectives. So take a look at those when you have time. Uh, next up would be the textbook. Um, the textbook for this semester is going to be uh, Criminal Law Today, the sixth edition. There's a brand new edition that just came out. Uh, the seventh edition, if you have that one, that's okay too, but the sixth edition is fine. Um, and here, of course, is the ISBN number. Um, and if you go into your course canvas, you can also see that uh, the publisher for the textbook, a lot of times they have different deals where you can get an electronic book for a certain price. Uh, you can get the paperback uh, kind of version, the soft cover, um, et cetera. So you have some different options as well. Uh, moving on, I have listed here the California Penal Code is optional. Honestly, you don't need it. So the Penal Code, it's not a primary book, but because this is a criminal law class, we're going to be referring to this book from time to time. It would be the California Penal Code because we're in California. And if you don't have a copy of the Penal Code, again, don't worry about it because you can access all the information online at the link that I have listed right here. So it's legalinfo.gov. You can click on that link and you can access any penal code. Um, so no worries. If you have one, that's great. And if you don't, it's not a rig, real big deal. Okay, so now let's talk about checking into the class. So this course is going to open on Monday, August 16th at 8 a.m. Please make sure to check in using the discussion board as your official check-in for the class, okay? And as part of this check-in, you also need to complete a short 10-question syllabus quiz. Now, just those two things, I want you to note this, you have a lot of time. You will have until Sunday, August 22nd at 11 p.m. to complete this process. So you do have a lot of time, but I want you to understand, Failure to complete the check-in process will result in you being dropped from the class. We have a lot of students on the wait list. Uh, therefore, if you don't check in with both parts, right? Remember, there's two parts. You have the discussion board, and then you have the syllabus quiz. So those two parts are your check-in, and you have that entire six days to do that. So please make sure that you get that done. If you run into any problems or issues, uh, please shoot me an email, et cetera, and I'll, I'll work through it with you, but make sure that you get both of those done. As you're going to find out, the course is laid out in weekly modules to make it very easy for you to follow. And as we, when we get to the end of this review, I'll show you the course canvas. So some of the guidelines for the class, this is a somewhat fast paced class with a lot of information that's going to be provided to you every week. And because of that, you need to keep up with the readings, the chapter readings, etc. 
don't just rely on the PowerPoint lectures or the video lectures because we're an online class. I'm going to do a video lecture just like I was standing in the classroom. Uh, so you'll see the PowerPoint in the background. You'll hear my voice over the top of it, etc. So it's going to be a video lecture. Now, some of the legal terms may be a little bit difficult for you to understand at first because you don't know them. Therefore, you, you need to read the textbook chapters fully to understand them and to help add context to the subject matter. In some cases, you might even have to look up a word or a term on the internet, in the penal code, or a law dictionary. But at the end of the day, if you have a problem with any concept, definition, issue, whatever, let me know and I will discuss it in Canvas, in our class Canvas, in the general discussion board area. And this is called the Donut Shop, and I'll show you where that is in just a little bit. So this is not a super easy class, and it is going to require some work on your part to do well. However, at the end of the day, this class is going to be very rewarding from all of the knowledge that you're going to gain about criminal law. There's a lot of broad concepts that we're going to cover, okay? Um, and again, I keep kind of going back to the textbook, and this will be my last pitch. Uh, again, every week I'm going to do the video lecture, and it's with all of the content, it's hard to fit it all in 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 that lecture. So having the textbook will kind of help you fill in the gaps and will help you add context to what we're discussing each week. So what are now some of the course expectations? Well, weekly and throughout the course, I really want you to participate in a variety of different activities that are going to hope, hopefully help us all achieve those learning objectives that we saw at the beginning of the syllabus review. And, and here's a couple of them. So let's walk through these. The first one would be reading all the required materials, which means the textbook chapters, right? Any lecture notes, any articles, or anything else that's posted in those weekly modules. Number two would be viewing or watching the weekly videos relating to each chapter. That would include things like the PowerPoint uh, video lectures um, or any introductory videos that I might have at the beginning of each chapter module. Number three, participating in thoughtful and timely discussions via the discussion board, a time for us to exchange ideas. Number four, completing the online course matching exercise or assessment. Now this one is not graded. It's kind of a practice. It's the key terms, the definitions. And you can take this as many times as you want to help you learn the definitions. So it's not graded. So that's that's kind of a cool exercise for you to do to kind of see where you're at. Number five would be completing the online and timed quizzes. Number six, completing the online and timed exams. Number seven, completing the case study. And then finally, number eight, completing the midterm writing assignment. And don't panic about the writing assignment. There's an entire module in your class canvas that's basically devoted to helping you be successful at your writing assignment. And I will hold a couple of short online workshops during the semester to assist you uh, should you need it. Okay, so just kind of take note here that failing to participate in the discussion boards, missing quizzes or exams, or failing to turn in assignments or missing a combination of all of these could cause you to be dropped from the course. So please, again, make sure that you pay attention to due dates, make sure that you monitor the course announcements, the emails, etc., for any changes or anything that you might need assistance with. Uh, synchronous meetings, just really quick. Uh, during the semester, we will have opportunities to meet online via Zoom. These meetings are not mandatory, but they will be announced well in advance and will basically provide you with opportunities to exchange information, ask questions, cover topics like how do I format my essay? 
my midterm essay. That will be one of our little online Zoom meetings that if you already know how to do it, great. But if you don't and you want to sit in for a few minutes and see how it's done, then that, that would be a great opportunity for you to do that. And I'll, and I'll show you where some, some more information um, on how to write your essay uh, is located or where it's located in Canvas. So how do you know that you are ready for an online class? Well, first of all, if you've already taken online classes, you're probably more than ready, okay? But if you're new to the online environment, I have a couple of links that hopefully will, will help you out. So these, these will help you kind of gauge your readiness um, and, and, and basically help you understand you know, what's expected of an online student, even though I've already gone over a couple of the course expectations. So the first link is to the MSJC online learning page where they have some information to help you kind of figure out how to navigate through an online class. And I, I'm going to show you our actual course canvas at the end of this uh, lecture. And then second, I have a link to some video tutorials and other information again to help you kind of gauge where you're at as far as online learning goes and online success but because this course is formatted in this weekly folder or module type system it's going to be really easy for you to follow next up would be technology understand that you are responsible for your computer equipment and internet connection independent of the campus therefore you will need to plan your coursework and be able to accommodate any type of issue, okay? And basically what I'm saying here is try to have a backup plan should your computer malfunction or your internet malfunction. Um, so that way you're not just kind of stranded with no other avenue in order to, you know, to get your work done. If something happens on the college end, like Canvas goes out um, or the college internet goes down and canvas goes out I'll, we'll take don't worry about that you'll get extra time and things like that but if it happens on your end I'm asking you to have some kind of a backup plan and along with that I wanted to cover a couple of functions of canvas that are really important so the first one would be modules and remember I said that the class runs in weekly modules so this is where these modules, this is where your weekly assignments are going to be located. And I'm going to title each module so you know exactly what week the information is for. So an example would be, and we're right here if you're following along, module one is going to be titled week one. So week one is going to contain all of the assignments you need to complete for week one right it makes it kind of simple so your module will have the audio or video lecture uh, the chapter PowerPoint links to other videos or articles that are relevant for that chapter all your any, any exam or quizzes or discussion boards all of that stuff is going to be in that one little module and the goal here is for you to be able to find everything for each week without clicking around the entire uh, course canvas, if that makes any sense. Now, there's a couple of things that have their own little modules, and I'll show you what those are. But for the most part, everything you need for the week is going to be in those weekly modules. Next would be discussions. Well, this is where group discussions are going to occur. You're going to do your discussion boards. You'll find a link to your weekly discussions in each of the weekly modules. So that made it even easier there. Announcements, this is where you're going to find announcements for the class, including any relevant information on changes to exams, quizzes, or any other upcoming information I need you to know about. Like maybe there's a job fair or a career event or an actual job opening somewhere and I want you to know about it. Next would be the grade book. This is important because that's where your grades are. So here, you can monitor your grades as they're posted. Um, so, and, and kind of a little note I put there, if you don't see a grade in a certain area, make sure that you actually did the assignment before you send me the email that says I can't see my grade. 
because sometimes students might forget to, to do the assignment and maybe they thought they did because I'm sure this isn't the only class that you have. Um, so it's important. Um, so your quizzes, your exams, those are typically electronically graded. Once you've completed them, the, the scores populate. Your quizzes, you get two attempts for each weekly quiz. For your exams, you get one attempt, but you get plenty of time, okay? And then finally, extra credit. This is an area where you can find an extra credit assignment. There's already an extra credit assignment built into your course. And throughout the semester, I will put out a few different ones. Um, just note that sometimes the extra credit assignments are date specific, meaning that it opens on a day and closes on a certain day. So you need to make sure that you read that so you know uh, the time frame for any type of extra credit. Okay. All right. So with all of that said, how are we going to learn all this stuff that we've been talking about? Well, the methods of instruction will be, of course, the video lectures, uh, news articles, visual aids, photos, videos, PowerPoints, class participation, class discussions, written assignments, quizzes, and exams. And then on top of that, just understand that you are always welcome to attend any of my in-class presentations from any guest speakers. And I'll let you know when those folks might be coming into the classroom. An example would be last semester uh, when we were on campus. So maybe it was a little bit longer than last semester. But uh, typically for criminal law, I have had a homicide investigator come into the classroom and talk about what it's like. And if I have that same thing happen this semester for a face-to-face -face course, I will send out an invite and you are more than welcome to attend um, and listen to that presentation as well. Academic support, this is available to all students through the LRC um, or the help desk. Also keep in mind that this semester we look forward to having our AJ tutor, our student tutor back. I do not have her schedule. Uh, it's going to be Rita, who's been tutoring for several semesters now. Um, and as soon as I get her schedule, I will make sure to publish that to all of you. Um, let's see. Again, just a quick note. Is your, please monitor Canvas for any assignment changes or anything else that I might send out. Next up is the student code of conduct. Now, because this is an online class, there's a couple of just things that we need to know really that are important. First of all, you can read the code of conduct if you want. It's in the MSJC catalog and it's online. Uh, so if you want to read the whole thing, you can. But what I'm really trying to kind of bring about here is something called netiquette. So netiquette is basically network etiquette or kind of put another way, the etiquette of cyberspace. It's a set of rules for how we should behave online. Now, there's an author by the name of Virginia Shea, and she's defined these issues and discussed them at length in her book called, of course, Netiquette. And if you want to take a look at a summary of her core rules, you can at this link right here. You can click on this word netiquette and it'll take you there. Now, of course, it's not going to answer all of your questions more than likely, but what's there does provide you with some basic principles in, in dealing with netiquette dilemmas, as we call them. My big thing to you and to everybody here is to understand that we are all here to learn and we all have a voice and we just want to be very professional and understanding that when somebody posts something in a discussion board, that's their opinion and we should respect their opinion. You don't have to agree with everybody's opinion, right? You can repost and say, hey, that's cool, but I disagree, maybe it should be this. That's fine because that's how we get that discussion thing going, right? But I just want us to be professional and I want us to learn. And part of learning is kind of sitting back and listening to what others have to say and see what we think about that. 
again, we don't have to agree with everything. Okay, enough said. A couple other websites that are helpful, and I have a few others in your course canvas that I'll show you. The first is to uh, Cornell Law School, and the second is to the uh, United States Supreme Court. So a couple of other really good websites. All right, so let's talk about exams and quizzes, right? What could be more important or more fun? Well, anyway, um, so the quiz and exam questions are going to come directly from the textbook, the PowerPoints, the video lecture, the, or, or any other designated article or video that I post, okay, in each weekly chapter. So basically each week you're going to have your chapter reading assignment, right? The video lecture, a 10 to 20 question quiz, typically it's more towards 10, okay, uh, covering the chapter and discussion question, etc. Um, and there's going to be a discussion question on a topic that also corresponds with the chapter. Uh, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, overall, in addition to your weekly quiz and your weekly discussion board, there's going to be three chapter exams, a midterm writing assignment, and a case study. And then remember, in each module, there's that uh, non-graded self-evaluation kind of that key term matching exercise that I have built in to help you learn some of the key terms. So hopefully that's clear enough. And I think when I show you the actual course canvas, you'll get a better picture of what I'm talking about. Uh, discussion boards, again, these are typically reflective in nature. They are really meant to make you kind of think about a certain subject, maybe even research it, consider other points of view or perspective and then provide your response. So in this course, you're going to have a total of 16 discussion boards. The first one, remember, is the check-in. And then you have 15 discussion questions that correspond with the 15 chapters in the class. Now, one thing you're probably going to say is, hey, professor, I'm looking at the book right now, and I only see 14 chapters. Well, that's true because I added chapter 15. So anyway, so there, but there's still 15 chapters. Right. All right. Each discussion board is worth up to 10 points. When responding to discussion boards, make sure that you read the information or watch the corresponding video and then respond with what I like to call a complete, well thought out response. So if you want full point credit for your response, it needs to be at least five sentences long. Don't simply copy the response from another student's post. The more focused and thought out the response, the more points you're going to receive. And don't just respond with, I agree or similar. Tell me what you think. Now, with that said, you can respond or comment on another student's post and, you, and that response can be, I agree, I don't agree, etc. But for your initial post, it needs to be it needs to meet that five sentence criteria, okay? So make sure that you pay attention to that. Uh, in here, I also have an outline of your case study and all this is in the course canvas and I'll show you where it is, but it tells you a little bit about your case study and what it is and then some of the directions. It has also your extra credit built in assignment and it gives you some background on what it's gonna be. This is the Scott Filator murder case. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, for your extra credit assignment, you can submit it in a couple of different formats. It can be written, a PowerPoint, or even a video presentation. So you have some different options. So you don't have to just write everything, but read the directions. Okay. All right. So, and then your extra credit, you know, of course, there's points and things that come with it. And, and I'll put out some more extra credit throughout the year. But... Here, I have a little thing here, please read, because I just want to give you one last reminder before we jump into the course canvas and look at how the course is actually laid out. Again, all lectures, the PowerPoints, quizzes, exams, discussions, etc., are going to be posted in those weekly modules. Those modules open on Mondays at 8 a.m. and they close the following Sunday at 11 p.m. So as an example, and here we are on the page right here, this class right now is going to open on Monday the 16th at 8 in the morning. You're going to have until Sunday the 22nd at 11 p.m. 
to complete everything in the week one module. That's the orientation module. That includes the discussion board check-in and the syllabus quiz. Now, as a general rule, there are no makeup assignments. Why? Because you typically have six days to complete all of the weekly assignments inside of the folder and there really aren't that many. Therefore, it's up to you to get the work done. But I do understand that life happens and things happen, etc. And there's families and kids and spouses and yeah, all the other stuff like that. Other classes, school, life, all the stuff. So I do understand that. So I'll be as forgiving as possible, but please communicate with me as well so I know what's happening. Uh, emergencies will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, things like jury duty, military deployment, verified medical emergency. But at the end of the day, please keep in mind it's your responsibility to make time, set time aside to complete your assignments. Please, and you're going to hear me say this sentence a thousand times in this semester, do not wait until the last minute to do your work. That's not a good way to be successful. Again, I'm going to do my best to remind you of due dates and other information, but it is really your responsibility. So understand that and plan accordingly. All right, a couple of quick helpful hints and then we'll move on. There are two main issues that I see with online students who experience problems. First is the inability to keep track of your due dates. You need to be able to self-pace and regulate meaning keeping close track of those due dates and not waiting until the last minute to do your assignments. Okay, not waiting until the last minute to do your assignments. Second, and here we are in the middle of the page, would be the thought that because there are so many assignments, hey, there's a lot of assignments. If I miss a few, it's no big deal. Well, actually, it kind of is, and it does matter. Why? Because missing assignments, it kind of creeps up on you. They tend to add up quickly. And before you know it, maybe you've missed four or five quizzes and now you're missing 50 points. And it's just hard to get back sometimes. So that's why it's important that you, you know, really monitor those due dates and set time aside, structured time aside to help you do your assignments. Okay, enough of that. A quick note, and we'll talk about grading. On the weeks that you have a chapter exam, you're still going to have to do the little chapter quiz. Um, on those couple of weeks that it happens, and there's only a couple of times that'll happen, do the quiz first. Remember, every chapter has a quiz to help you learn the, the content of the chapter. And the exam is kind of encompassing several chapters. And, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. All right, so here's the grading scale. Pretty self-explanatory. Here are the grades and the, and the assignments. You have three chapter exams. You have 15 discussion boards plus a check-in discussion board. That makes 16. The syllabus quiz, the midterm paper, the case study, your chapter quizzes for 550 points total. Also, note that these exams are not cumulative. So let's say chapter one exam encompasses chapters one through five. Your chapter two exam is not going to have anything to do with chapters one through five. It'll be, let's say chapter six through 10. And then the final is going to be 11 through 15 or what have you. Does that kind of make sense? The final is not gonna have questions from your chapter two or chapter one exam. All right, so they're not cumulative as when it comes to questions, et cetera. All right, so a couple of important dates I will let you look at at your leisure. Of course, if you need help with anything as we go through the semester or you have any questions, please email me direct, post it in the general discussion area of the donut shop, and I will be there to answer them as quickly as possible. But anything I can do to help you, uh, to make things easier, to make you successful, I will do that. Uh, next is the written assignment. This is also, of course, in your course canvas, uh, but I've also just put a little outline for you here. Uh, this is going to be your midterm case brief. There is a module, again, in the course canvas that will show you how to do this. 
We'll also have a couple of sessions where you can log in and, and ask questions or what have you. I give you the questions that I want you to write about. And then here's some of the instructions. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and here's some more information reference. I'll let you read that at your leisure. Uh, one new thing I just want you to note that if you've already completed this particular case study, the Maryland versus King, I would like you to let me know that so I can assign you a different one. Sometimes it happens where maybe they overlap from a different class, etc. And maybe I don't remember that I assigned it. So I just want you to be as honest as possible. If you remember doing it, let me know and I'll give you a different one. And, you know, same, you know, uh, same rules apply as far as, um, you know, what you need to do, etc. It would just be a different case. All right, and then bef finally, before we jump into the course shell, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about plagiarism. I just want you to understand that when you copy information from a textbook, an article, a news story, another paper, without acknowledging the source or using quotes, acknowledging the author, the statement, etc., this is plagiarism. Okay. So even if you change a little bit of the wording, it's still considered plagiarism. So if you're going to use, and it doesn't mean you can't use it, um, you can take things from another paper and put it in your paper. Just make sure you cite the source, okay? And in, in your course canvas, I'll show you there's a module that helps you learn uh, how to write in the APA style, which is the style that we'll be writing in this semester. All right, and then finally, here's the course outline. So this is kind of just a generic look at how each week is going to go. Week one is your orientation week. Part of it is the check-in. Remember, we have the discussion board and the syllabus quiz. Week two is chapter one, okay? Here you have, you know, it built into your, your module, and I'll show you what it looks like. You're gonna have an audio lecture, a PowerPoint. You have an introduction, et cetera. You have a matching exercise, which is not scored. Remember, this is where it's key terms, where you match key terms with the definition for practice. Here's your weekly quiz and your weekly discussion. So it looks very similar. It's set up in the same kind of weekly fashion. When you get down to week six, you'll notice a little bit of a change because here you have a weekly quiz and you have your first chapter exam. So you're going to do the quiz first, right, because that's going to cover this chapter so that way when you get to the exam you've already done this that makes sense so this exam will cover the prior five chapters all right and then as you go through here too it'll tell you when certain things are due week 12 at the end of the week which would be november 7th your midterm paper is due you have a lot of time to do this paper so but don't wait until the last minute okay and then as you go a little bit further down, you see here week 16, your case studies do. OK, so a lot of, you know, pretty easy to follow in these weekly module format. OK, now this is not published yet because we're, we're a little bit before the semester, but this is what your course canvas looks like. Now you can click here and it'll take you to a start here page. There's a little bit of welcome information. OK. But if you go to the modules page and over here on your left, you can see the different different links, okay, your navigation bar. I have more in my navigation bar because I'm an instructor, so you may not see all of these. From a module view, this is what it looks like. Your first week is this introduction. Now, these aren't all graded. These are just different things for you to like look at, all right? There's a welcome letter, information about me. Okay, and I'll just take like two minutes real quick and so you can read the welcome letter. It talks about the donut shop. There's another place inside here for student to student contact called the squad car. You can go down here to the bottom and you can click next. And this tells you a little bit about me. Okay, there's a photograph, some information about me. You can click next. So right now you're actually walking through the orientation page. So this is what you're doing, okay? A little bit more information on the textbook, a couple of videos on the different vendors for or publishers for textbooks. Information on how to be successful online. Office hours, just just a lot of information. OK, 
And then as you start to go through, now let me go back to the modules here so we don't spend too much time here. In this first module is going to be the discussion board check-in and the syllabus quiz. And this is your week one. Now, if you look at week two, oh, let me let me do this real quick. Here I have a, a module on how to access Zoom. I have a module for the Criminal Justice Club, a module for some cool websites to look at, Bill of Rights and different videos that talk about the different amendments, videos on the court systems. Here is your midterm writing assignment module. Okay, it's got a video lecture on how to write APA. This is just the PowerPoint if you don't want to hear me talk. Here's your actual writing assignment. Here's how you upload your assignment and here's information on our AJ Tutor. This is your case study module. Here's your extra credit assignment module that's already built in. If I give out other extra credit, it's going to be here. Here's week two. You have an overview, an introduction, and I'll kind of walk you through this really quick so you can see. Every chapter has a unit overview. It tells you what it is, a couple of the objectives, and a little to-do list for you to keep track. I have an introduction. So here I talk a little bit about what the chapter is about, and I want you to kind of watch this little two or three minute video on the Code of Hammurabi. And then next you have just the PowerPoint. So if you don't want to hear me talk and you just want to look at the lecture without any noise, here it is right here. So I give you that option. Here's the video lecture with the PowerPoint. Sometimes it's one video, sometimes it's two. It depends how much content is in the lecture. Okay. I like to try to keep my lectures to 60 minutes. Sometimes I'll break it up into two videos. Sometimes I'll leave it at one. It just kind of depends how much. So as you walk through your chapter, here's the assessment exercise, non-graded. So you can take it as many times as you want. Here's your chapter quiz. You get two attempts at the quiz and it'll automatically keep your highest score. And then here's your discussion question. Okay, and this one has a, a little bit of text. Okay, why do we need laws? And here's a couple of videos on why we need laws. And then finally, you get to the end. Here's a new thing, just so you know. Last semester, what I did is instead of responding or posting a response to every student's discussion, I took all the information that everybody posted and I did like a discussion review and put it on a video. It was like five or six minutes long. Students liked it, so I'll try that this semester. If it doesn't work and you guys don't like it as much, then I'll go back to responding directly uh, to each student. But I had some good feedback on this. And then you're done. That's the unit summary couple of other important links that you can use uh, for case laws and criminal law, etc. If you want to post a question in the general discussion area, you can go to the donut shop. And here is just a general discussion area where you can post and every student can see it and we can ask questions, do all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of a look at how your weekly modules are going to go. They're extremely similar to make it easy for you to follow. I would suggest spending 10, 15, 20 minutes just looking, just kind of looking through here. You can see they're all set up almost the same, right? So it's really hard. Everything you need here is right here. It's all in there. So it, it, it's very easy for you to follow. So again, just to kind of so you can see what it looks like, here's your case study. It talks about thought crimes. That's going to be your case study. There's a couple of videos uh, that I want you to watch. And then you are going to, you have some options to write your case study. So I, I hope this was helpful walking you through. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Feel free to post it uh, in the general discussion area or you can email me direct. So with that being said, we made it under the 45 minute mark, which was my goal. Uh, I look forward to a great class with all of you. Um, and I will continue to send out more information as, as we get into the early stages of the semester. So that will conclude our syllabus review for AJ 101 Criminal Law Online.